Okay, so many questions. One, why do we need a 10 gigabit connection to the public cloud? Two, how much does it cost? And three, how exactly is this working? We'll get to all three questions. First off, why do we need a 10 gigabit connection to the public cloud for the CTO advisor hybrid infrastructure? Well, our model is pretty straightforward. The way that we got money to build this infrastructure is that we're getting sponsored by various IT vendors. In this case, we're getting sponsored by Oracle to do a study of all the cloud providers, VMware, vSphere solutions. So first, we needed to come up with a scenario, a realistic perspective of why you would even consider a VMware vSphere host, uh, solution hosted in the public cloud. This isn't too difficult. We did a video even before Oracle offered to sponsor uh, the study, we did a video a few months ago talking about the pandemic and the rapid need to add VDI instances to your environment in response for the demand to work from home. If you have a VDI solution today and you need to increase asset access to that VDI solution by tenfold, meaning you need 10 times as many users because next week you'll have a thousand, 10,000 remote workers. How do you do that? You can't procure the hardware fast enough and going with a desktop as a service solution will be a different solution more than likely than you have on-premises. VDI, extending your VDI, on-premises VDI solution into the public cloud seems like the perfect scenario. And for us, that's the perfect scenario to test the solutions. Is VMC on AWS just as easy to use as VMware solution on-premises? The same for the other cloud providers. Is there a difference functionally between vSphere running and the different cloud providers? Oracle's sponsoring us to answer that question. But that's for another date. We're talking specifically about what we're doing in order to support this effort. This part of the conversation is not sp sponsored by anyone other than the CTO advisor. So let's get to it. We'll talk about both costs and how we're functionally doing this. So our partners over at Build Day Live built in my data center, a simple vSphere cluster, something you'll see in every data center, every enterprise class data center, a uh, traditional HCI stack that's running uh, VMware's Horizon uh, solution, and we built that simple use case. We could go out to the public cloud and just, or, or go out to the public internet and just form a VPN to each cloud provider. That's typical of what you would do in, I think, normal operations in which you're, uh, you, you have low requirements as, part, as far as bandwidth and latency, et cetera. But this is enterprise VDI. You need as low latency as you can get back to the application and you need a lot of bandwidth. So we contracted with a cloud broker by the name of Megaport. Megaport provided us a 10 gig connection or a 10 gig port into their facilities. Megaport in turn has facilities at each one of the major cloud providers. So we wanted specifically connectivity into Azure, AWS, Google Compute, and Oracle Cloud Infrastructure. We could have went individually and gotten one gigabit ports or 10 gigabit ports, but again, we're in a colo environment. So we're thinking about basic connectivity. Colos typically charge about $300 a month for that cross connect to your provider. So whether you're going with a WAN provider or someone like Megaport, 
you're going to pay a base charge of $300, roughly $300 a month for each one of those cross connects into the public cloud. So running the fiber from your cage or racks into the cloud provider is about $300 a month. So let's put our cost up here. Then Megaport charges another $500 a month for the 10 gigabit port. So your base cost just for each physical connection is about $800. If you're going in, if you subtracted Megaport out and you had Direct Connect, et cetera, AT&T, uh, Verizon, whomever would charge you their base rate to get you connected to the cloud provider. The great thing about Megaport and solutions like Megaports, that's a one-time uh, charge or one-time monthly recurring charge that kind of doesn't make sense, but you get what I mean. Uh, but a single charge monthly. Now I need to add the access to the provider. We'll focus on Oracle since that's the solution that, we're, that we brought up first. To get a 10 gig port to Oracle is roughly about $2,400 a month in my situation. That is a, oh, that is a, the CTO advisor has a, a, a problem with that amount. Ongoing for the Oracle study, that's fine. But this is a connection that I want to maintain throughout the life cycle of the CTO advisor hybrid infrastructure story. When I talk about modernizing the data center, I will always have at least the $300 cost, the $500 cost, and some cost to the cloud provider I choose to be my premier cloud provider for my infrastructure. $2,400 a month is a big pill to swallow. Fortunately, with the Oracle solution specifically, this is a variable amount. I can go via software into the Megaport port portal, choose all the way down to one meg, but practically there's not a big price difference between one meg and a hundred meg, so meg. So I can go down to a hundred megabits uh, per second or a hundred megabits. And the cost is only $124 a month. So 95% less than a 10 gigabit per second connection. So when I'm not actively testing OCI when I don't have my engineer Tom Green, you know, setting up NSX between my data center and the vSphere instances running in Oracle, I can run that port at 100 megabits, save 95%. And when I do actual testing, when I do a V motion from my data center into any one of the public cloud providers, I can just turn that knob via software up to 10 gigabits. Now, that's an interesting part of the Oracle solution because Oracle relationship with Megaport allows for that dynamic provisioning. Tom will show this in the videos that he does. You can go over to Build Day Live to, uh, Build Day Live to watch these videos where he's going to go into Megaport, provision the Megaport port. He's going to go into uh, OCI provision the fast connect back to our data center and show you all of that goodness. But in the Oracle side, we're going to provision a 10 gig port by, but dynamically change that via either via API or the web interface in the Megaport port. So that's how much it costs me. Uh, if I were to leave it up to this max amount, you're looking at roughly $3,200 a month. Effectively, it's a couple of hundred dollars a month for the OCI connection. So you're looking at $1,000 a month to be able to burst up to 10 gigabits per second when I need to. So that's the why, what, and how of what we're doing. If you want to follow this project, follow the hashtag, hashtag CTO A H A. I'm sorry, HI, CTO Advisor Hybrid Infrastructure on any one of the social medias you are following me on. Or you can go to the website, thectoadvisor.com. We're rebuilding it now to focus on telling this data center specific story. If you want to see us do something special in one of these providers while we have the connectivity, let us know. Again, hit me up on Twitter at CTO Advisor or via the 
form on thectoadvisor.com and we'll be more than happy to answer your questions. Talk to you next CTO Dose.